think it's very, very important. And the fact that we actually ask ourselves this question is like, would you ask uh, as yourself whether I need to treat diabetes early? Would you leave a disease that you know you have to evolution and get worse? We are actually asking this question because we don't have many treatment, actually we didn't have any treatment at all until recent years and we just let the diseases go with artificial tears, which is fine, patients need them, but they are not treating the pathophysiology of the disease. So I think that the sooner, the earlier, the better, the much better. So yes, I do treat patients as soon as I can. What's inside for diagnosis? I start treatment. Um, in general, I try to prepare the ocular surface for the anti-inflammatory anti treatments because the one we have available are not exactly super well tolerated. So the ocular surface needs to a little bit of preparation, and then I go ahead with anti-inflammatories. And then um, you know you shape your treatment depending upon how the patient does, but basically for life. It's equally important because whenever symptoms are there is because there are signs and you will hear that uh, symptoms sometimes do not correlate, that you, we might be seeing symptomatic patients without seeing, seeing signs. The thing is that we don't see, the sign. we are not having all the tools that we need to see all the signs. If there are symptoms, there has to be something wrong. And just to give you an example, we are unable to see the corneal nerves in a regular in our regular routine practice. We can see them now within FICO, in vivo con focal microscopy, but we cannot do this routinely. So if the patient's feeling pain, and I have patients who are in a real, in real bad pain, and the cornea looks absolutely normal, then you do other things that you do routinely, and then you start seeing your, why this patient has symptoms. I don't think these patients go around complaining just because they don't have anything else to do that going to see a doctor, spend their time and money. So we as doctors need to understand that. And, and this is a, it's a pity because many doctors say, well, you don't have anything. You must be, you, you just need to go to a psychiatrist. I don't think this is very wrong on our part. If patient has complaints, there has to be something else behind that. The first one is, I just said, we need um, more diagnostics, diagnostics tool to understand why sometimes we don't see signs with patients are very symptomatic. Then we certainly need more drugs because we only have steroids. Um, there are two more drugs in the market right now, um, cyclosporine, lifitegras, as anti-inflammatory drugs. But as today, in this country, for instance, we don't have them yet neither of them and um, so we actually don't have anything else to offer our patients so that are steroids and everybody knows it can cause cataract and elevation of intraocular pressure eventually glaucoma so we are um, a little desperate as our patients are I mean with frustration frustration is the worst so we need more drugs and we need to understand the mechanism mechanism of action of those drugs and not just have companies just putting the drugs there without telling us in which patient in which stage the drugs can be associated with that, and this has been very often the case, it's just a drug and, and then, so we need to do more research. Um, and also, and this is linked to the reason why we don't have drugs, is because many drugs fail. I mean, the interest is being very active in trying to get that drugs in the market, but they fail often in the clinical trials. And one of the reasons is because we don't have a good biomarkers. We are relying on symptoms, and symptoms are very difficult to catch. With whatever questionnaires, very difficult to catch. So a patient can really improve, and they do not write it down in the questionnaires as they should for many reasons. So we need biomarkers, and many people, including ourselves, are working on that to have a biomarker that will tell us for sure this drug is functioning or not. And we need to also get rid of the influence of the environment because um, you know you have multicenter clinical trials in the place where the humidity is 70 percent in a clinical trial where the humidity is 30 percent at the place where I live and that has been shown to be a very important factor f for the high variability therefore the 
the um, standard deviations are very high and then that's why some of the, one of the reasons why companies fail at showing effect because of the variability in their multicenter clinical trials.